up, all you beautiful Pokey Noob fans? We got a pretty exciting episode for you guys today. I'm your host, Pokey Noob. I got my two co-hosts, as usual, with me, Jill. Hello. And Ian. You. So how you guys doing this week? You guys enjoy your Halloween, Jill? Yeah, I had a pretty decent Halloween. I mean, you know, just took the dog for a little walk around the neighborhood, which uh, I think that would we talk about later for Jirachi's. What did he do this week? But yeah, pretty pretty decent, you know. Not it didn't do much. How about you, Ian? Uh, same old, same old, really. Just sat inside playing some games. Facts, I feel that. Yeah, you know, we're a little bit too old for Halloween now. But yeah, as Jill was saying, we took Jirachi out on a little Halloween night walk. He was dressed up as a bear. But uh, we got a pretty exciting episode for you guys today. We're gonna go on with our normal events for the week. Uh, this week for TCG Talk, we're going to be doing a little bit of a top five for Vivid Voltage, top five Pokemon we chose. But other than that, we're going to hop right into our Poke News of the Week. What you got today, Ian? So on today's Pokemon News of the Week, we have a continuation of a bit of news. I wouldn't say a bit. It's a good, uh, good piece here from last week. So Dumb Money TV the same people who paid out $375,000 for a first gen or a, a set of first gen boxes, they ended up not getting what they paid for, to say the least. So during the live stream, the streamers ended up pulling card after card and realized, you know, one card was a different color than the other, one card seemed newer than the other, and then it came to the point where they found a pack that had already been opened, and then that is when uh, Camilo ended up saying, you know what, let me call the vendor. So, called the vendor and requested a refund immediately, and that is huge for a $375,000 purchase. Um, the Guardian reported that both sides of the transaction strongly denied allegations that the event was a stunt, but following the event, Greenbaum tweeted a clip of the chaotic event and suggested to the public to only buy PSA or BGS graded Pokemon cards. So this is massive news only because of, in the first place, this was a huge transaction. I mean, we, we were saying this last week, but this week, now we're seeing that there really is major risks for Pokemon blowing up this, this big in, in such a short amount of time. People really need to be aware with what they are buying. And personally, not knowing too much about it, I would be hesitant on buying anything of a significant sum until I was fully aware of what the card is, what it should look like, how it, you know, how it should look, and then go from there. I would spend a good amount of time actually making sure I'm getting my money's worth and not getting scammed because, you know, years ago I had actually had the misfortune of going to a flea market and having bought multiple fakes. And as a kid, I never knew. Growing up, I always thought they were real cards. They looked really cool. These were Yu-Gi-Oh! mainly, but there were a couple Pokemon cards in uh, the mix. But the problem is, is that nowadays... People are paying way more than just a couple cents per card. They're paying hundreds of thousands of dollars, as we see here. So, buyers do need to be very precautious with how they go about purchasing cards and collecting them. Yeah, and uh, I just wanted to clarify, this was the news from the week before last week uh, that we talked about Dumb Money Live TV. But yeah, that just sucks because, you know, I'm sure people just like having the gamble of spending all that money on those high valued packs and then trying to you know pull the cards they want to get graded because buying graded cards is you know really expensive and you're not really i mean i guess price can go up in them over time but you're not really getting much out of it as pulling that card and then i don't know it's just scary that you know people have to worry about fake cards in general so did you did you say that they didn't have any luck on getting a refund or anything? From what I understand, they were able to come to a settlement where they were able to refund 
after there was video proof that the cards were in fact not completely genuine. The only problem with all of this is, though, is that although both sides have reported that the allegations that the event was a stunt are there, a lot of viewers are still a little skeptical about the entire ordeal. I mean, that is a lot of money to spend on cards, and for something like this to happen in this fashion, I mean, it, it can really deter people from getting into the scene or even trying to collect. And that... Yeah, it wasn't... Uh, sorry. Uh, was, wasn't this uh, for a uh, charity event, too? From what I understand, he was going to sell them for charity, which makes it a little wor- well, it makes it even worse. I wouldn't say a little worse. It makes it even worse when it comes to the fact that it didn't really work out. So hopefully Dumb Money TV will be finding another way to donate to charity. But for now, I don't believe there was any news on what their replacement event is going to be. Yeah, that's just a big bummer because I was actually watching a little bit of a recap of the live stream and, you know, they had the biggest uh, Pokemon YouTuber there is. His name's Leon Hart or Leon Hart. And he, they had him kind of start opening the pack because, you know, he's experienced. And then as soon as they were opening them, you would start seeing some packs, different colors than the other. And they instantly started freaking out and calling people in it. I guess that's why they call them Dumb Money Live, you know? It's always the dumb moments. <laughs> Very true. But, um, yeah, that's a, you know, scary world with Pokemon out there right now and big box breaks like this. Um, Be careful who you're buying from if you ever want to pull these kind of stunts. That's all I can say, really, but I'd say, I'd say just stick with the new cards. You know, they're fun. You can get some money out of them if you get the right ones. But uh, yeah, that was pretty awesome. I'm like, uh, I appreciate that we can recap on last uh, news that we did. But yeah, Jill, what do you got for On the Hunt today? Okay, so today I found this really cute Etsy shop. It's called Calico Etsy, or just from Calico. That's the shop's name. Um, and they do a bunch of different types of... Pokemon related products uh, some of my favorites are that they have these really nice face masks they have uh, my favorite one is the there's a Gyarados and Magikarp one and it just looks so cool she also has uh, these uh, pins these enamel pins and again they're just really nice I mean even getting just pin sets from that are marketed from Pokemon themselves. These ones are just so cute and I don't know, you can just have them for a collection. Uh, there's a lanyard here that you can also put your pins on. Um, there's a, she has an EV one listed on the shop. Um, there's coin purses again with all the different evolutions. Uh, a bag you can you know use that pretty versatile it's like a little tiny you know you can use it for i don't know putting little tiny things in it um and this one pin i really really like is a wooloo pin and it actually spins so it looks like wooloo's doing a little roll <laughs> uh and also not only that um off kind of the topic of pokemon she has a whole bunch of different stuff too there's animal crossing pins which i really like uh she does uh Studio Ghibli pins, um, there's Kingdom Hearts, Final Fantasy, Overwatch, basically, you know, any of your favorite things that you like, you know, she has on here, and also, I wanted to mention, she did, uh, we did reach out to her, and she did give us a code for 10% off until the end of November, and that code is Pokenoob, just Pokenoob straight up. Uh, again, that's for 10% off, and it lasts until the end of November. And on top of that, she does free shipping for orders $35 and over. Yeah, I mean, this is a really cool shop, and I really we're really thankful for her just giving us the opportunity to just, you know, support her even more by giving us this code. But um, I just wanted to say these pins are really nice, and I know there's a lot of people out there that really enjoy collecting the Pokemon uh, pins themselves and then their new gym badges they had come out recently a lot of people are collecting those and just something extra to you know hang up there with your other pins i'm really enjoying this mimic one it's giving me a stare like mimic should and 
I don't know. I, I really like them, and I'm really appreciative of the code she gave for us. So, yeah, if you want 10% off this stuff, type Pokey Noob in at the end of your checkout and, you know, get a little bit of discount on these. Uh, you got a favorite in there, Ian? You seen anything you like? I love the Pokemon uh, pieces of art she's created. But in my opinion, I absolutely adore these Monster Hunter pins. I yeah, think those are cool. I think they're the coolest looking thing, honestly. I, I think the the triple set of uh, what are these? The oh man, I'm gonna butcher the names. The Zen Ogre, the Odo Garon, and the Dodo Gamma. Those have to be my absolute favorite. She is. Oh yeah, a those is are it a really single cool. person. Jill, yeah, one know? person, I believe. Yeah, she's doing some amazing work. I really like this stuff. Yeah. Yeah, she has a lot, and she has, like, pretty much five stars all around. And like I said, this is probably one of my favorite um, shops I've seen so far that I'm able to talk about on this show. And I'm just so happy that, again, like what Keegan said, that we're able to, you know, support her and her supporting us by giving... um, anybody who's listening a a 10 percent discount yeah and i also as ian was saying the monster hunter ones are really cool i'm gonna also try to pronounce these names because i found these ones awesome there's a nergagante deviljo and legiana i think but we're probably butchering (laughs) these hard but either way they they really are awesome this this was a good find by you jill and even better work from from calico yeah, so definitely check these out, guys. Hit her up at From Calico. That's C A L I K O uh, on Etsy. And, you know, buy some stuff. Use that Pokey Noob code. But uh, moving on from that, we're going to head right into our main part of the day TCG Talk. So today for TCG Talk, I went out and hunted a little top five of the new set coming out November 13th Vivid Voltage. And uh, I'm really excited about it. There's a. Uh, a lot of potential when it comes to the card game, and what I've noticed, a lot of draw support. But uh, we're going to hit into our number five Pokemon from Vivid Voltage. We have Beedrill. Ian, you notice anything on this one? Uh, I mean, I like the Elusive Master ability. That is, that is for sure. It might be hard to actually get that into play sometimes, where it is the last card in your hand. Uh, you play it onto your bench, and if you do, you draw three cards. That's not bad at all. But I do really like the Sharp Sting for only two energy. That in itself does 120 damage, so Beedrill v. Beedrill, you can almost two-shot one, and if you have any kind of upgrades in terms of damage, uh, you're looking at a nice nice chunk of damage for a basic... Oh, well, it's not a basic card. It's a Stage 2, of course. It comes from Kakuna, but it, it seems like a really easy card to set up and then on top of that it it doesn't have any retreat costs so you really you really can weasel this into your your grass deck and have it be absolutely uh, value at times in my opinion i i i can't see this being a bad card to add to your deck right and then as you were saying if it really needed to get that 10 extra damage to one shot another beedrill it wouldn't be that hard with some trainers also coming out in this new set. But what about you, Jill? You see anything on Beedrill you like? Um, No, I mean, I think uh, you guys both made a really good point about the ability and the sharp sting. The only thing is, um, is like we said, that you have to evolve it. And the fact that, you know, if it is your last card in your hand um, and you play it on your bench, that might be a little uh, hard to pull off yeah that's the only that's my only concern about it but yeah i I agree and plus i mean for having um 130 hit points and then having a move that does 120 again with two energies that that's almost like kind of hard to come by like with pokemon cards of having a low energy cost for a pretty decently powerful move yeah it's it's not a bad card, and like Ian was saying, it also has no retreat costs, so you can sneak it out of there if you want pretty easily. And then, um, yeah, I basically chose this uh, as our number five card for its ability. Um, there was a Greninja card, a Greninja GX card, that is from the Detective Pikachu set, and it's out of standard now. I, actually, maybe it's not, but 
this one's a lot easier to pull off from what I'm hearing. Um, you're mainly going to want to use this in decks that you're going to want to constantly be flying through. Like, for example, if you are having four B drills in your deck, you're going to have the chance to pull this ability off maybe once or twice. But uh, for decks that you want to fly through, I'm not sure if it would fit perfectly in this, but Mad Party comes to my mind. I, I know when you're playing that deck, you just want to get through the deck as much as fast as possible and get the damage in the discard. So I'm thinking maybe there's times where you could throw this card down just to get, give yourself an extra three cards for that turn. And then it also um, it blends well with the Rose Tower Stadium, which is basically the exact same ability if you're... Uh, low on cards you have one or two left you can draw up to three cards so basically with this b drill card it's almost like using um rose tower twice and then you know you can easily get this out with evolution incense and play around with it with the scoop up net if you can manage it right so i think it has a lot of potential there's a lot of things you can throw around and do with it so yeah i put that as our number five so going into number four kind of a similar play uh we have snorlax what you think about this one jill um well first off i love the art that's a very cute snorlax he looks so little <laughs> he doesn't look as big um as he's normally portrayed um yeah i mean the ability on this one uh as you said is somewhat similar where if uh this pokemon is in your active spot uh, you may draw cards until you have seven in your hand. And then if that's using the ability, you can't use your attack because your turn ends from using that ability. So that's something to keep in mind. Also, it has a four uh, just regular energy um, attack for 100 and it can leave the active Poke uh, Pokemon paralyzed, so that's, you know, pretty nice. But just talking about the other card, that one did 120 damage, and it only took two energy. So with pretty much every Snorlax card, you're usually putting down four energies to do his, uh, whatever his move is. So yeah, uh, Ian, what do you think about this one? To add on to what Jill was saying, and to really realize it i mean it, there's a good reason why you've got this in the top five i mean it, when you compare this to b drill's ability i feel like personally this is the better version of that ability yeah. by a good margin i mean having it in your active spot is a little bit risky however you can draw until you have seven cards in your hand and you get to use it every turn. I mean, this is a solid setup early game card. Like this will this will get you started when you really need to get something out quick. Oh yeah. There's there's not too many reasons to use the attack in my opinion. I don't think the hundred damage for four energy is really worth it. Although that paralyze is a good, you know, it's a, it's a good amount of compensation for having to use the four energy. I I still feel like the ability is the whole reason why this card is valuable and and i could see this card being used specifically for that what is the uh, we've talked about it before but what again is the the fire type card and what is the ability that you get with him that's energy wise right that's you're thinking of uh which one volcano oh, volcano yeah um that one is a move and... but yeah you can if it's your second turn i know you can pull out the three energies for one pokemon so that's energy, but that's energy alone. This Snorlax, every single turn without having to use any energy, can pull seven cards, which can very easily be energy cards that you need to set up the rest of your deck. And on top of that, this is a normal type card, so any type of energy will work if you really do have an abundance of it. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, like you were saying, you know, you're really not going to use this for its attacking move, obviously. That's a lot of energy to put out on a, you know, not too high of a health Pokemon. But also, if you wanted to compare this to Beedrill, I think they're both good in their own ways. Beedrill, you know, you can use it and your turn doesn't end, so there's that. And then you can also scoop them up out of there so you can kind of protect them. Snorlax, you know, you only want to use if you kind of have nothing else to do. You know, you can throw Snorlax up there and then draw some cards. And it's only a one prize card loss if he ends up dying. 
but usually you want to use this when you know he can maybe survive a turn just to get those extra cards. Like early game, you were saying, would be a good choice. Yeah. But um, it's also sad to say that this would be a great card to blend into those Zacian decks because if you don't really need, you know, he has that ability Zacian uh, Intrepid Sword where you can draw those cards and then if they're steel energy, they go right onto them. But um. This one, you know, it can be better in some sorts of ways because you don't always need that energy on Zacian. And, you know, you can just use it to draw cards for your turn if you can't attack or something like that. So, you know, it could be like a good turn saver, and that's why I have it at uh, number four. And look at its description real quick before you proceed. It is not satisfied unless it eats over 880 80 pounds of food every day. When it is done eating, it goes promptly to sleep. So I wonder where all that food goes if he's a thousand pounds. Yeah, since he's only a thousand pounds, what happens? I know, every day. Just sleeps it off. That's how he brings his energy. Remember we actually me and Keegan were watching um the newer Pokemon show. It's basically I guess supposed to take place of like the uh Sword and Shield series and there's an episode where they have a it's when they first find out uh how to uh Gigantamax the Pokemon, and they even state that uh, that he eats so much food, and they have to get him out of the way of a train coming, and there's like a piece of food right above him. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, there's a tree <laughs> with a fruit above him. And then him. he just goes back to sleep. I didn't even know the new series was out. Yeah, it's on Netflix, actually. I would check it out, dude. It's awesome. Oh, man, I'm going to have to resubscribe. I haven't watched since Sun and Moon when Ash actually won the... Yeah, they got the new guys in there, Sword and Shield. Is Ash first. still the main character? No, well, kind of. It's like a blend between him and this other guy. But the other guy, oh. you know, he's just grinding. He just wants to catch them all, and Ash is like, chill, dude. Well, he wants to catch Mew. That's... But he's been, like, catching, you know, trying to go. But, yeah, it's Ash and then Go, which is what the guy's name is. So it's mainly him, and then Ash is kind of more on the side. But he's still in it, and, you know, they're still getting into many adventures. Yeah, me and Jill have been kind of going pokey ham. We've been, we just got the new Switch. Well, it's not a new Switch game, but it's new to us. The uh, Pokemon, it's like Tekken Tournament. It's like Mortal Kombat with Pokemon. It's a lot of fun. And then, yeah, we've been watching that a lot and playing the card game. So, have been pokemon it up. But, yeah, Ian, definitely check that out. It's a pretty good show so far. Will do. But, uh, yeah, Snorlax, not a bad card. A lot of draw support for sure. Seven cards is massive. But uh, we're going to move into number three, and I got Colossal VMAX, the big dog. So, uh, yeah, what do you think about this, Ian? Uh, so right off the bat, I do like the HP of these VMAX cards every time, uh, considering you can set it up with Colossal V. I still think the V and the VMAX cards are just absolute meta. The fact that you can set them up just like this, I mean, it, not to make another comparison to Beedrill, because it's not the best comparison, but say you're doing a Kakuna to go to Beedrill, instead you can do a Colossal V to a Colossal VMAX. Oh. And for yeah, sure. you're going to lose more prize cards if he goes down, but you've got Eruption Shot, which is 40-plus damage. Discard the top card of your deck. If that card is an energy card, this attack does 90 more damage. Personally, I'm not a fan of discarding energy to do more damage. However, um, you do get to attach that card to this Pokemon. So you get one energy on, you do 40 damage, and let's say three turns in a row, you absolutely lock it out. You're going to do 90 damage every single time, and then set Colossal VMAX up for an absolute smasher of a move, which is GMAX Boulder. That does 240 damage in a single hit every turn. And there's no restrictions. No restrictions whatsoever. That is massive amounts of damage right there. The retreat cost is a bit iffy, and the weakness is grass, which we, we see decently often. It's, it's fairly common, but... It's coming back. I mean, this is a good card all the way around. Yeah, bring your switches if that retreat cost is a problem, too. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, what do you think, Jill? I think that it's, like, the like two steps up of the Torkoal V card, which we talked about before, which is probably one of my favorite cards to play. 
because of the fact that it does that same move where when you uh, do that damage, I think Torkoal is more, I think it might be, you do 90 damage, but that is just a V card. Um, you get, if it's a fire energy for him, you get to do like 80 or 90 more damage. But with this one, you get to do 90 more damage and attach it to the Pokemon, which is like just Massive. awesome. <laughs> yeah, you can, I mean... And it's really not a big deal, uh, just even looking at the fact that, okay, it takes four energies to do uh, the G-Max Boulder. But I think usually by the time you uh, V-Max a uh, V-Card, you already probably have energy down, hopefully. And even if not, I mean, you just do this, you already put an energy down, then you do a mo this move, the Eruption Shot, and then you get to put another energy down, and then, you know, the next turn... Because it's going to take a lot to just, you know, kill off this guy since he has such a high, uh, has 330 health. You get another energy down, but in two turns, you know, you can already do the G-Max Boulder if you don't have anything down on it already. Which is just crazy. Yeah, this card is definitely one you're going to have to fear if you're facing it. Um... We, uh, this card has seen a lot of potential. It's been, uh, winning, well, not winning, but getting really high ranks in, uh, Japan tournaments currently, uh, since, you know, they have this card before us, but, uh, it's actually made its way up to the number three deck on LimitlessTCG.com. That's like where everybody, you know, sees what top decks are popping right now. But, um, yeah, also this is what I find is going to be Eternatus's biggest fear. Cause you know, we all know he's weak to fighting so this is going to be let's say his counter because you know he's been doing really well himself so but one thing that really gets me going so there's a way that you can literally use eruption shot but get it to where you can get that extra energy every single time so if you use the orangaroo card i don't know if you guys are familiar with this i use it in a good amount of my decks but it has an ability where you get to, once during your turn, switch a card from your hand with the top card of your deck. You got an extra fighting energy, switch that to the top, you use the, uh, what is it called, eruption shot, and you get that extra damage and energy on every single time. So as long as you have an Orangaroo down on your bench and have an extra energy, you can get that right at the top of your deck and be able to do that extra damage. So something like that is just... Probably, you know, something you're going to have to worry about. If you can't find a way to kill that Orangaroo and stop that consistent energy buildup, you know, that's going to be scary. And then also the Vivid Voltage, Vivid Voltage set is going to be releasing Stone Energy. And what this does is uh, the Pokemon it's attached to takes 20 less damage from attacks. So, you know, there's just those small chances where, you know, it could help you from being two shot or one shot. You never know when it could help you save that one extra turn. But, um, yeah, that's Colossal VMAX. I think this thing is going to be very powerful in today's meta, especially with that first move for one energy. You know, that's crazy. But uh, moving on, we're going to go into our number two. We got Talonflame V. What you think of this, Ian? Uh, I really want to see... I do like this card, personally... Reading over it, I'm a little bit confused as to why you've got it in the top five. Not to say that it's a bad card, but I'm really curious with the way you'd play it out. The reason why I say that is because its first move for one energy is fast flight, and it's if you go first, I'm assuming that just means first, first turn. Yeah. Right, like initial very first turn, or just... Right, yeah. Okay. Off the coin flip. Okay, so you can use this attack during your first turn, discard your hand, and draw six cards. That seems a little bit risky, considering right off the bat, you're probably not going through all your cards just yet, because you can't. And then Brightwing in itself is 160 damage, but you got to put three energy and then discard one for every time you use it. So... I do like the no retreat cost and the, the resistance to fighting, but I am very curious as to why you've got this set up. Don't worry, I'll get there. Yeah. What do you think about this, Jill? Um, my first thought was that it seems like um, 
these cards are getting more like strategic on how you get to use their abilities or moves because the last few uh not colossal but the other uh snorlax and Beedrill, they were cards that you have to have either in your active spot or they have to be in a specific play in the game and this one is also a part of that group where if this will have to be you know when you get your first seven cards this will have to be the card that you put down first in your active spot so it's just all on of luck it seems like um with a lot of these cards that are coming out and yeah i mean i i, I don't really have much more to say about that about this card but yeah um as ian was saying you know if you the first move is fast flight for one colorless it says if you go first you can use this attack during your first turn so the reason this is effective is because, you know, you can't use supporters your first turn. So there's nothing, you know, you can actually do to get that draw support first turn unless you have, like, a crowbat or something. But if you, you know, you can get, you know, say you draw, like, four Pokemon and, like, I don't know, a couple items or something. You know, you can use all those cards on your first turn, get all those Pokemon down, and then you can use this move and then just get more cards for your next turn so you're kind of getting like a new hand ready for your next turn if you have you know a low amount of cards you're able to discard or cards that you don't really need at the moment that you can get later or something like that but another reason that this made it far up on the rankings for our top five is because you know it's a giant firebird but you can use this in any single deck and that's a alone a good reason why it makes it super effective because any kind of draw support for a deck can save you in a lot of situations. But, so there's that, you know, it can be in any deck. But, you know, if you were to just use it in the fire decks, you know, we all know the power of welders. You know, that energy getting on for that move. You know, three energy, first of all, for a move for 160 isn't terrible. Especially when fire, when it's a fire deck card. Because, you know, the welders, you know, you get you can get three energy on one card in one turn easily. And then, you know, if you are discarding a lot of energy using that um, move, there's lots of uh, different retrievals for energy that you can use, like lots of supporter, I mean, trainer cards. And then specifically the fire crystal card, you can put a couple of those in your deck and you're able to take three energies out of your discard pile. So there's ways of getting that energy back if you happen to use that energy, but Mainly this is up there because it can be used in any single deck. And we all know that cards like that, for example, Crobat and Dedenny, you know, cards that could be used in every deck have a lot of potential because of that. But, um, yeah. Any final thoughts on this? So you're basically saying that it's not really a fighting card per se, but it's more of like a, a, a strategic card where you can pull. Yeah, it can be for fire, definitely, because of welders and fire crystals. But mainly it's just going to be used for that draw support, first turn draw support. They can, you know, use a quick ball, get that talent flame out. And if they don't have anything to draw for their next turn, they can use that as their move. And then, because, like, you know, you can't even use a move on your first turn. The fact that you're able to do this and use a move on your first turn just to do something, that's effective. But what about you, Ian? Any changed thoughts? I, I figured that would be the way you're going with it, which I, I can definitely agree. That, that could be very, very useful for it. Yeah. I just feel you're going to really need to either hope for some good... Some good luck when it comes to pulling your next hand, yeah. or you're going to need a certain scenario where this card could either be mediocre or it could be very top tier. And I mean, that's that was my immediate thought on Crobat as well, but now as we see, it is a very, very well-known card. It is very used, and a lot of people love it, so we'll yeah. see what strategies people come with this card. Definitely. Like like you were saying, too, you know, if you can't happen to get it out on that first move, it's not as effective as, effective as it could be. But, you know, if it is in a fire deck, it still has that potential. For sure. But okay, we're going to move into our number one, and this is actually a favorite for me and Jill as well because of our little boy Jirachi, but we got Amazing Rare Jirachi. Jill, what do you think? Well, right off the bat... um, 
it is definitely a as Drachi usually is a um not a fighting card but more of a like card pooling type card i mean i really like the ability um which is once during your turn if this pokemon is in its active spot you may look at the top two cards of your deck and put one of them back into your or put one of them back into your hand put the other card back on the top of your deck so you can look at both those cards usually when you have something that you can look at your cards they either tell you to discard it or put it back into your hand and shuffle it so not only do you get to see what your next move is going to be and know what you have you have a card that you can also use in your play which i just find really cool and really helpful yeah what about you ian I, I really like the setup potential for this card. Uh, being able to search for up to seven basic energy cards and attach them to your Pokemon really is just huge. Of course, you do have to shuffle your deck, but that that hardly means anything when you're attaching seven basic energy cards to your Pokemon. That, I mean, that alone just... Yeah, is, that's, it, really that's massive. massive if you can actually pull that off for sure. Um... So we got this in our number one spot today, and mainly for its, you know, well, honestly, I picked it for its, when I first saw it, I saw that move, and I was just struck, but a lot of people seem to be interested about the ability that it has, just because, you know, we've all seen the uh, Jirachi, I forget what set it's from exactly, but it falls asleep, and you're able to look at, like, the top seven cards of your deck or something, and pick a trainer out, and take it, and it doesn't end your turn or anything like that. People find this ability that this new amazing rare Jirachi has effective because you can, you know, look at those cards and get a card that you want, put the other one back, you're going to know what you're going to get next turn, and it doesn't fall asleep. So that alone, you know, the other Jirachi fell asleep and it gave you a little bit less to work with, but this one's still awake, you still have the chance to retreat it out or scoop it up and... I don't know, that's crazy. And then I find that move, if you're actually able to pull that off, you got one fighting energy, one psychic energy, and one steel for the amazing star. You know, you search your deck up for seven basic energies, as Ian was saying, and attach them to your Pokemon any way you like. And then shuffle, of course. But, you know, I, you know, it's scary. I think this could fit into steel decks because they already have that steel. And then if it's an ADP deck and they can work the aurora energy back into the deck they can maybe pull that off i don't think that's a deck that this card needs but you know the whatever the works barrier. right <laughs> yeah um i would like to see this move get pulled off if anybody ever has the chance to pull this wish or what is it called amazing star off let us know because i want to see it in action i'm going to be youtubing this for sure but you remember my dragon deck. Sorry to interrupt. You remember oh, my good. dragon deck, right? Where I've got Guzzlord as one of the main. Yeah, and oh, you're using all kinds of energy. I'm using there, right? Psychic and Fighting and Steel. So oh, oh, wow. this this card would be perfect for that deck. Yeah, as long as you're consistently able to get the different energies out and get them on in the right times, you know, this could be crazy. I want to see you use it. Yeah. You're getting a Vivid Voltage box, right? Oh, yeah, and I can't wait for it. When is it actually being the released? The official release date is November 13th. November so, uh, 13th. I'm going to do a little shout-out for TN Comics here. Go check them out, tncomics.com. That's where me and Ian both got our Vivid Voltage boxes. Probably get them maybe, I'd say, max a week after the 13th, but we're both really excited. We got a good price on those, pre-ordered them, and going to be opening a lot of vivid voltage on the show once we get them but uh yeah that was our number one spot amazing rare jirachi i think this card has a lot of potential it can do a lot of crazy things and yeah just extra you know insight on the deck just being able to use that ability too but um before we move on to what your favorite picks are from vivid voltage i just wanted to say a couple honorable mentions for our trainer cards um, this one was the telescope scope. Um, I find this effective because the attacks of the Pokemon, it's a tool card actually. The attacks of the Pokemon this card is attached to do 30 more damage to your opponent's benched Vs and benched GXs. So those Pokemon that, you know, are made for attacking the bench, 
this boosts them even more. For example, uh, Cramorant V, I believe he does 160 to the bench, just a one Pokemon, you're able to do 190 to the bench. So that's crazy. And then there's Inteleon VMAX, and then um, if you think of Pikaram, you know, he does that extra, what is it, you get six energies on him, and his GX move, you do 150, and then like 170 to the, or you do 200 to the active, and then 170 to the bench. So that extra 30 would also make you do 200 to the bench as well, giving you that ability to one-shot something stronger off the bench. Yeah, I was even thinking about with the Interdinus, uh deck, where there's the uh, Galarian... The Zigzagoons, I'm not sure if they would apply to those because it's not an attack. And you wouldn't have the chance to put it on it because it's a tool. And the Zigzagoon instantly does damage once you throw it down. So, oh, okay. Yes, yeah, so so you wouldn't be able to put that Just because it's not on. an attack. But yeah, that would suck because you'd be able to do 40 damage with Zigzagoons and people are able to pull them up and put them down. So that would be... Yeah, that's what I was thinking if that uh, if that was possible. It was like, yeah, just... That would be kind of stupid. <laughs> but, um, yeah, what, you got any uh, opinions on this telescope scope being... No, I mean, you pretty much covered exactly why it would be used in any given scenario. Yeah, I'm thinking of just some extra Pokemon that maybe have fallen into the dust can be brought back with this telescope scope. That'd be cool to see. Because, you know, I'm tired of seeing, you know, the same three decks taking over the meta. I want more power in all kinds of types. But uh, moving on, I also chose Leon. Um... I chose this one just because, it, you know, it gives you that extra little buff to hit those one shots or maybe two shots. Um, during your turn, your Pokemon's attacks do 30 more damage to your opponent's active. It's a supporter card, so you'd be able to use one supporter a turn. You'd put this down if you don't have anything else to draw with or whatnot, so you could do that extra damage. And this comes to mind, I've been playing, I just built my Eternatus deck. Um, so his max damage is 270, I believe. And that isn't enough to one-shot a few things. So maybe being able to put Leon down and get that 300 damage, you can one-shot more than you want to. And then lastly, I put down the Surchester Bath, or Kerchester Bath. Um, now this is a little bit scary because it also could boost the ADP Zacian decks because they include all basic Pokemon. And what it does is... Um, all basic Pokemon take 20 less damage from attacks from opponent's Pokemon. And it's a stadium card, so you know it's it applies as long as it's up there in play. And um, I think this can be, you know, either Zacian Index getting boosted more, or maybe it could help prevent you from that extra 30 damage that they do. You know, at least taking two-thirds of it less, taking only that extra 10 damage, it would be a little bit better, but still... I think there could be potential with the Surchester Bath, too. Just these little bits of damage can make some potential plays. But, uh, yeah, those were our honorable mentions for trainer cards. And, uh, yeah, I just wanted to roll into what you guys are hyped for. So, uh, Jill, is there any certain cards that you're hyped for in this set? Um, I wanted to just talk about mainly, I mean, I have a... Uh, Amazing Rare Raikou um, up in front of me that I was going to talk about, but it was mainly just me talking about the Amazing Rares uh, coming out, and I believe uh, the first time they came out was Legendary Heartbeat, which was the Japanese set um, that a lot of these cards are coming from, and my first time seeing them is when uh, Keegan bought uh, two booster boxes of that set, and he had a amazing rare Zacian that he did trade away. TNC um, Wiz. Enjoy that. <laughs> and also, I know there was a Celebi. And uh, did you get a Raikou too? Yeah, I have a amazing rare Raikou and a Celebi. Yeah. So I just thought they were really cool cards. I mean, I just like that the fact that they're putting another rare type card putting more of a value on the card you're getting to and just the rarity yeah the fact that they're actually adding a new type of rarity just excites the whole world of pokemon just because you know we've all seen the hollows the reverse hollows we're seeing all these big pretty foil cards but you know 
it's nice to add in a little something new every once in a while. And these rainbow, you know, the rainbow art on these amazing rare hollows just looks so good. Like, I don't know if they're going to look as good as the Japanese ones did, but still, I'm going to be hunting for them in my box. Um, Ian, what do you got? So, mine is not an amazing rare. However, it is yet another VMAX card. I love these VMAX cards, so it is a Darmanitan, Galarian Darmanitan, I should say, because regular Darmanitan is a fire type. This one right here is an ice type, however, in the trading card game, it is a water. Um, so it's Galarian Darmanitan VMAX, and it only has a singular move. It does have a hundred or a 320 HP, but its singular move with four energy does 200 flat damage which is nice but the best part about this move is this attack also does 30 damage to each of your opponent's benched pokemon so that's rough it can really considering it is a v max card and sit around for a good amount of time with that 200 damage it can punish cards that may be able to stop it and then in return also destroy a potential setup by the opponent so if you do oh, yeah. not have an immediate response for getting this card out good luck because this card is going to it, it almost feels like watching a youtube video where a guy is just setting a pokemon up you know how they play the competitive pokemon game online yeah not not card game the the game game itself and then yeah, yeah. they'll have all these Pokemon, all five of them will just set up this last one, and the last Pokemon, depending on what it is and how they want to play, will just wipe the enemy team. And there is absolutely nothing that the enemy team can do about it. Well, if you don't it's have a special a, weapon. Exactly. If you don't have a if you don't have a steel type, or if you haven't already done damage to this guy, or if if you don't see that he's not fully set up, I mean they, I don't see a lot of counters to this guy immediately. I mean, 320 HP is enough to survive at least two hits from anything in the game, and then getting hit for 200 every time is just massive pain. So that alone was the reason why I had to recommend this. I mean, the graphics, or the graphic alone, is really cool. I always like the way Galarian Darmanitan looks like. It's 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 just basically a blue Santa Claus Pokemon, in my opinion. But yeah absolute beast of a card here oh yeah galarian darmanitan is definitely a cool pokemon too i have the theme deck for him and it's a lot of fun to run but also i was going to say the v card for this you're able to paralyze so you could paralyze and then v max and then start hitting those max wideouts. but uh also this is a something to fear if you're using those one prize card decks because that 30 damage will add up and tear them out quick exactly so yeah those were our um vivid voltage picks um what do you guys rate this uh set one out of ten let's hear it joe what do you think well i don't know until i i guess see it in person but so far i actually um out of the last uh few that we've seen come out um I'm talking about darkness of blaze uh champion's path and this i think this is probably my favorite one. Um, again, I really like the amazing rares that are coming out of it. And just some of the cards itself uh, that we didn't mention. Uh, I like the like the, a lot of the trainers, especially like the full the full art ones. It's just awesome getting to see, um, you know, them bringing new and different Pokemon in and trainers. And just, you know, spicing it up a little bit. Yeah, definitely. Um, what about you, Ian? Would you give it... Oh, wait, I... Jill, you didn't give us a 1 out of 10. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, I'm going to give it... I'll give it an 8. I would have to say about an 8 as well. I, I like I like a good mixture of things going on with this deck, but in the same aspect as what Jill said, I don't know all of the cards that are coming from this pack, and to be honest, I'd rather be surprised rather than fully know the card list. Uh, from what I've seen so far, I do see a lot of really meta cards coming out of this deck, uh, or set, and I am really excited to see what will happen 
uh, when this set is fully released and out to the, the North American public. I, I can't wait to use this online, or this set online. Oh yeah, it's definitely going to be a lot of fun. Um, I would give it a, I'm going to go up to a 9, only reason because I feel like it's been a little while since we've gotten a full set that feels pretty much 100% dedicated to the play style of everybody. Like, you know, there's a lot of different ways you can, you know, build specific decks just with the trainers they've released or, you know, certain cards that fit into every deck. And then I've also, I just wanted to say, I'm really happy that they're releasing a good amount of new energies too. Those are always a lot of fun to use and play with. And they can also buff your deck to be very good. <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, I'm definitely going to give it a nine. I think it's nice to see a a set that's, more focused on the play style of everybody and a little bit less collecting. I know there is a big hype about about the uh, Rainbow Pikachu VMAX. A lot of people are going to be keeping their eyes out for that, but you know, it's not a shiny Charizard, so it's not going to be as hype as Champion's Path, but it's definitely going to be hype for actually playing the game, and that's what I'm about. But uh, yeah, that was our TCG talk for this week. We're going to take a little bit, bit of a break, and we'll be right back. up everybody we are back from our break we're fully refreshed and ready to open up some cards so today is a very special day reason why is because i got my marnie premium collection in the mail today again shout out to tn comics they're amazing and uh yeah i saved two packs for me and jill today and we got some champions path to open for you so uh i'm gonna start off got a guard of wire pack here I'm guessing grass energy. I'm gonna guess dark. Alright. You said grass and dark. We got a fire energy. Ooh, Screw that's your grass. Alright. Got Pokemon Center Lady. Turf Field Stadium. Hop. Trubbish. Got the trash bag Pokemon. Potion. Galarian Lanoon. A Nicket, a Machop, a Reverse Hollow Rock Ruff, and a Hollow Marnie. Shout out to the Marnie box. All right, Jill, take a crack at it. Did you want to read your code card? Oh yeah, thank you for that. I didn't read my code card again. Why do I keep forgetting that? All right, so uh, for that Champions Path Pack, you can grab that. TKK, 2BJK, BCB. 7PD. Get some Champion's Path online, guys. Okay, and now I'm going to open my pack with the Dreadnought on it. Gotta go water for Dreadnought. Did you guess any? Uh, steel. Open. I'll go with the steel. Oh my gosh. Jill's having a little trouble with the Dreadnought pack. Technical difficulty. <laughs> oh my gosh. She's got a little uh, pack trash in her mouth now. <laughs> it's not opening. Here, can you try, try to get this for me? We're having uh, the Pokey Noob Pro opening up the pack for me because I just don't know how. <laughs> Alright, so. Got so you got water card. and steel for the guesses. Alright, so code card uh, for the champion's path is TMD7KWDVT22GW. And we got a electric energy. Oof. And we're gonna start off with a Rotom bike, a Machoke, a Bee Drill, Scraggy, 
Carvana, a Galarian Zigzagoon, a Kakuna, a Roly Coley, a Suspicious Futin Reverse Hollow, and oh! What is it? <laughs> it's a Rainbow Gardevoir V Max. Oh my god, that's our second <laughs> one. <laughs> oh, wow. I wasn't still. expecting. That's still <laughs> she hard. thought she saw the rainbow Charizard. <laughs> no, I wasn't even because I thought I saw at the top that I saw a yellow. So I was like, "Oh, I'm not gonna get anything good. It's gonna be just another like, uh, hollow like rag rag knock or whatever." Still, this is a beautiful card. I know some people who are First just trying good to pull this specifically pull of the show, and there's already well, Keegan has one and. Either way, though, that is definitely our best pool of the show, Rainbow V Max. Yeah, the first we haven't even pulled any like V's or like. I know that. Yeah, we end up pulling a rainbow one. <laughs> We're setting a few records on that. And I think earlier Keegan pulled the alternative, uh, alternative art for Guard of RV. So he has. Yeah, a... I pulled the full art V card for Guard of War. So I have the V, the normal V. I got the full art V. And now we got the, well, I've already had it before, but now we have two rainbow Gardevoir V Maxes. Gardevoir loves me this set. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, so uh, those were our card openings for this week. Uh, definitely a cool pool by Jill. Um, yeah, we're going to move on, though. So we got, what did Jirachi do this week? You want to start us off? Okay, so I'm going to talk about how um, he went on his first, uh, well, I wouldn't say it's his first actual play date because he's been around my sister's dog and she has a, he's an Australian Shepherd Golden Retriever Poodle Mix. His name's Hudson and he loves him. And then a friend of mine, uh, she actually has a puppy and she's a uh white german shepherd and we ended up deciding to have a little play date for both of them and the whole entire time it was just him running around and with her throughout the house and they were just running around constantly and i always feel so bad because since he's a pug he has a flat face and he has trouble breathing and you know this is a bigger dog and she's already almost like the normal size of a german shepherd because she's a little bit older than drachi and he's just trying to keep up with her and they're just playing all the time and running around and then like by the time he brought him home he was just like exhausted he was beat he was he was he was just so tired but it was really nice because you know he he doesn't really have any like dog you know dogs around here that he can really play with other than the ones he sees on his walks and we always come by other dogs but yeah he was it, I was just so happy he literally slept like from two to seven that day just because he was <laughs> he was so tired and he just tries to keep up with all the bigger dogs and there's no stopping him because he just wants to keep going and going. Yeah, I definitely wanted to me or I did mention earlier uh on Halloween night we took him on a little bit of a walk. There was creepy kids in all their scary costumes walking around and Jirachi was loving it. Uh sadly he didn't get to go up to the houses and get candy, but you know, he was looking pretty good. He was wearing a little bear suit and the kids loved him. And then also uh we took we've taken him on a good amount of car rides this week and it's been very rainy recently and I just wanted to mention that this man goes absolute beast mode on windshield wipers. If the windshield wipers are going left and right, he's going across the car and it's nuts. Yeah, he tries to bite them. Um, next time I'll make sure to try to videotape it because it's just so hilarious that he just tries. Because I, I try to, yeah, I hold him in my lap and I hold him uh, with his harness on to just keep him next to me when Keegan's driving. And yeah, he likes to attack him. But next time it does ring, I'm going to try to videotape it and put it on his Instagram, which is jirachi.pug. If you want to check that out, um, it's... To me, it's worth it because he's just so cute and, you know, you might as well see what he's up to. Yeah, definitely give him a follow. He's it's a very important man. Um, we've definitely gotten a little bit of support already on the Jirachi.pug page and we appreciate it. But uh, 
Yeah. All right, so that was it for What Did Jirachi Do This Week? And uh, we're going to roll into one of our last segments of the day, Gotta Catch Em All Pokemon Products, where we choose a product by Pokemon for the week. So, Jill, what'd you pick? So, on the topic of Jirachi, since we've been talking about him a lot today... I know, massive um... Jirachi episode. <laughs> Their uh, Pokemon is coming out with a Jirachi GX collection, which is really exciting. It says it's supposed to launch uh, November 1st, but I haven't seen it on their site, and it's already the 3rd, so um, I don't know if there's anywhere else to find it yet, but it isn't actually on their site from when I checked. But with this uh, GX set, you get a full art card um one which is featuring uh jirachi gx two foil promo cards which is lucario and uh decidueye which is really cool you get two coins and i believe i can't i don't know why i can't see what's on those coins because it only has one picture and it doesn't say what's on them but they look rainbow i don't know if you can see them uh keegan or ian but it looks like either a Decidueye or Shaman coin, and then a Lucario coin. So it's probably a uh, Decidueye, because they have, um, it's a yeah. Lucario and Decidueye. And then you get ten, uh, booster packs, and then, a, you know, obviously a code card, uh, for the box. Um, it looks like they have some, uh, XY evolutions, there's... Breakpoint on there, uh, a base set, Sun and Moon. Um, gosh, I, I wish this wasn't just one picture. I'm really trying to look at it. And I can't even see what the other cards are. So you're getting a bunch of different, actually, like older cards in this, uh, or uh, packs in this uh, set, which is really cool because, you know, I think a lot of people are kind of excited with the evolutions to get those uh, older looking cards um but yeah that's that's basically it it says oh it does say it's uh it is available at target and walmart so that's why it's not online i just saw that now so i'm um sorry on my behalf of that but yeah so they're available at target and walmart from uh november 1st so you can pick them up there i don't have a price on them right now but um yeah yeah definitely check those out um it's definitely more of a collector's item just because of the packs. I mean, I know a lot of people are going for those evolution packs and some older packs in there, but mainly for this cool promo alternate art Jirachi, I think it's a very beautiful card. I don't know if you've got a close-up on that, but looks good. Uh, what do you got, Ian? So for the Pokemon product of the week for me, I chose the brand new Ball Guy plushie that Pokemon no has introduced. And the only reason why I've really picked this, I wouldn't say only reason, it is a nice plushie. However, the reason why, the main reason why I picked this is mainly because of Ball Guy's introduction into the video game series. So with Ball Guy's introduction into Sword and Shield, I was very happy and surprised to see something like this in the game. And I hope they keep this guy around so near every gym that you would do and even once you got to the elite four and then even after you've beaten the elite four when you do the tournament modes you have this guy come up to you and give you a free pokeball now this pokeball can be um uh, pretty much from what i've seen any random sort uh, assortment of pokeballs in the game which at this point is a lot of different type of either nuance or uh, specialized Pokeballs, but there's so many at this point that it's nice to have some type of avenue of getting them and having them being given to you for free is really, really cool. Uh, I'm not going to lie, it is honestly interesting to collect the Pokeballs in the game itself. It's not hard and it's not all that interesting to a lot of people, but Personally, I like all of the different Pokeballs. I, I feel like it unintentionally adds on to the lore itself with all of the different Pokeballs. I just hope in the future they allow him to do some type of event or they do an event with Ball Guy 
and they add even more Pokeballs or even add easier ways to get the more specialized Pokeballs for further gameplay enjoyment. I, I feel like overall he was just a really good addition to the game with all the critiques I have to Sword and Shield. I do love this. And so that is why I chose this plushie, especially, you know, it's also new. So you might want to check it out. Yeah, I think it's a definitely cool plush because it comes from the game. You know, if you haven't seen this guy out while you're playing Sword and Shield, then have you really been playing? But uh, yeah, definitely a cool pick, Ian. Um, we're going to roll into my pick this week, and uh, I got three words for you. Togepi, Cleffa, and Igglypuff. Or Iggly Buff, sorry. But uh, I've mentioned this on uh, episode two, I believe, where we chose a top pick for fairies. I really like this card because of the moves it has and the potential. But uh, they're releasing a small but mighty premium collection box. It says it's also launching November 1st. I'm sure it's the same deal with Jill's box. They're probably in Walmart and Target if you can find them or your local card shops. But in this box, you know, you're getting a never-before-seen foil card of the tag team Togepi, Cleffa, and Igglybuff with special art. So that alone is really cool. I'm sure a lot of people are going to be getting this box just for that collection X aspect. But um, yeah, this is a very cool card. Um, in this box, you're getting 10 booster packs, and I can see Vivid Voltage. I can see Darkness Ablaze, Evolution. So Definitely packs that are fun to open, and then you're also getting a pin featuring Togepi, Cleffa, and Igglybuff together on one pin. You're getting a coin featuring them three, and then a sidekick dangler, supposedly, of all three of them as well. And that is something different that you don't usually do, so go get your small but mighty box. Go get your danglers. It should be a pretty cool box. But uh, yeah. Going to move into our last segment of the day, our Pokemon Trivia of the Week. Last week, we asked you guys, um, at the shared weight of 0.2 pounds, um, there is Haunter, Ghastly, Cosmog, Kartana, and what other Pokemon? And the answer for that was Flabebe. So they all share 0.2 pounds weight. So if you knew that, good for you. But this week... Our question is, to avoid any troubles with lawsuits, the creators of Pokemon changed this Pokemon's name from Blank to Vulpix. So what were they going to originally name Vulpix before actually coming across that name? And that is our Pokemon Trivia of the Week. But uh, besides that, I think we're going to wrap it up and that'll be a show. Um, I just want to thank you guys for whoever listened. Make sure to check us out on anchor.fm slash pokenoobpodcast. You can see everywhere that we have a platform on there. Um, please email us. We love to read emails. We want to see them. Uh, pokepodcastmon at gmail.com. That's P-O-K-E podcast M-O-N at gmail. Um, another note, make sure to check out from Calico's Etsy page. Uh, that's Calico, C-A-L-I-K-O. Uh, you can get 10% off any of your orders with the code POKENOOB. Make sure to use that. But uh, other than that, anything you guys want to say before we close it? You beat me to it. I was going to recommend from Calico again. Definitely check out those pins. They're top notch. Oh, yeah. Jill? Um, yeah, I just wanted, I actually ended up getting, um, the Walmart link to, uh, I just wanted to add it on to what we were talking about with our, uh, products of the week. It does go for $50, and to add on to what Keegan's product said, that one is only out in Target, and... It is also $50 as well. And if you're in Canada, you can also get it at Toys R Us. But it's not, you, you can't get it at Walmart, unfortunately. Um, but other than that, uh, I just, you know, had a really good time today. You know, always learning new things. And, you know, I'm excited for next week. Yeah, same here. But yeah, as Joe was saying, definitely go pick up those collection boxes. It's uh, definitely cool to see when they use older cards and remake them make them cooler but yeah thanks for listening uh we'll catch you guys next week peace out